Let, let us pray and ask for God's help. Now, Father, how, how important it is that we ask you for your help and we uh, thank you that we can and, and you'd love to hear us uh, ask that, that of you. We thank you that what we have in our hand is, is your word inspired by your spirit, given to us, breathed by you, revelation that is outside our human experience. We are so grateful for this. Without it, we'd be lost. And we thank you for the special ministry of your spirit, who is the only one, really, who is able to open our eyes and touch our hearts and allow your truths to come alive in us. And we pray today that that would continue, that would continue all our days in both our private reading of your Bible and also as we hear it publicly declared. I ask that you would minister to us now. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, many years ago, a long time ago, uh, John and I, we used to um, play for the Bassanine Tennis Club. And we used to play tennis pennants, and, and one year, our coach decided we needed to do some training. So we had some workouts. So we were taken down to uh, Perry Lakes, Old Perry Lakes, where there's two lakes. And we were told to run around, the squad was told to run around the two lakes, which is about two miles long. So we all started off running. And uh, John and I running together to start with, but, uh, you know, we're pretty, um, pretty competitive. And so as we're running along, it didn't take long before, we're not running together anymore. And it's no lo longer a fitness run, it's now a race <laughs> between John and I. So John, I'll never, never forget this, John starts bolting ahead of me. And I thought, well, I'm the older brother, I've got to, can't let that happen. So then I go past him, and I go past him, I'm now, and we're going at three-quarter pace at the start of the race. Not race, to run. And um, anyway, I'm trying to catch my breath. He goes past me. Then I have to go past him. I'm trying to break him and slow him down. Didn't trip him up. Just trying to slow him down. And so it's like this the whole way. And we're getting faster and faster. And we come to the last 500 metres. And um, you've got to believe this. I am hurting. I have got pain in my body. I'm trying to get my breath under control. There's 500 metres to go and I thought, that's it, I just got to sprint to the finish line. <laughs> so I just sprinted to the finish line and John is trying to keep up with me and I crossed the finish line just ahead of my brother. And um, <laughs> 10 minutes flat, John comes over the line straight behind me. He does not look too good at all. <laughs> and, I, and why am I sharing this story with you, this crazy story? Because the only reason why I kept on going, the only reason why I didn't chuck in the towel, was because of a little word, no, it's a big word actually, called perseverance. I persevered. And John persevered too. And perseverance is such a, a key word in the Bible. Do you know, have you noticed that? Perseverance. Keep on persevering. Don't give up. Keep on going. And uh, so that's why I shared that little story with you this morning. Uh, I'm going to read to you, not from Romans 15, but Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. And it says there, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we are in a race. Not a race where we're competing with each other, but our journey to heaven is like a race. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And like a marathon runner, it takes perseverance to make it to the end. A marathon runner will face all sorts of hardships as they're running that 42 k's. That makes them feel like giving up and so do we. What a parallel. There are many things that can try and hinder us from persevering. Uh, we, we have our own sinful flaws that can really cripple us. We have people who oppose us. We have the world that is trying to pull us back. And we have the devil having shots at us with his fiery arrows. And the word of God tells us, persevere, persevere, persevere in the race, the race marked out for us. And even when we're hurting, and even when we feel like giving up, and uh, I don't know in your Christian life whether you have experienced that, I hope you also know that the call of God, persevere, persevere, persevere. And in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, we have a beautiful verse to help us know how we can persevere. And you should all know that verse. It's part of that little phrase we use in our name, Bazo Church, and it is fixing our eyes on Jesus. And that's what it says. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus and look at his perseverance, 
Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus persevered for us. Hallelujah. Through his perseverance, we are saved. And we need to persevere too by looking to Jesus, looking to him and depending on him. And now I want to come into Romans chapter 15 because did you pick up on a beautiful verse in Romans chapter 15 verse 5 that talks about perseverance? I think the NIV has endurance. Let me read to you Romans chapter 15 verse 5. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. So not only am I to look to Jesus, I also have the blessing of God our Father giving us, it says, giving us perseverance and encouragement so that we can run the race well. I love that verse, do you? Because I sure need it. So looking to Jesus, but God himself from within is giving us perseverance and encouragement. And this morning I just want to look at this, this passage, not all the verses in it, Romans 15, 1 to 13, and I want to highlight three key words when it comes to, to living the Christian life, running the Christian race. And, and it's so important we look at this on a day we call the AGM as well for the church because as we reflect on our church, it all comes down to this, how are we going? Well, we have to ask each individual, how are you going? Because we're a collection of individuals. Uh, are we running the race well? Do you know how to run the race well? You need perseverance. You need encouragement and you need hope. They're the three words we're going to see in this passage this morning. So let's start off reading Romans chapter 15, 1 and 2. Now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Each of us is to please his neighbour for his good, for his edification. Wow, so we are told that we are to be selfless, we are to be pleasing others, not pleasing ourselves. And I know the word perseverance doesn't come there yet, that comes later on, but you should all know that um, in order to please other people, to be selfless, you can do that for a time, time and time then and another time, but to do it regularly, continually, requires perseverance, doesn't it? Because it's so easy to put yourself first. And we need to persevere in being selfless, in being those who please each other. That's what we're called to do. Uh, my favourite passage on this is Philippians chapter 2, 3 and 4. And it says, wow, these are strong words. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. And you know, as soon as I read these words, you ought to be hearing these words and going, wow, I need to repent. I need to say sorry to God. Because there's many times when I'm not doing this. It says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but for the interests of others. Now, these are challenging verses because we live in a society where we are told it's all about you, we have a sinful nature that is saying all the time, it's all about you. And we have the Christ, his spirit, speaking to us saying, it's not all about you, it's all about others. I remember learning joy. Joy is Jesus, others, then yourself. That's how it's meant to be. And with Christ in our heart and life, we are, that's the only reason why we are able to change our life around and to be able to live out these words. But it requires perseverance to do it. Now, I don't know if you picked up... The, verse 1 might sound a bit strange because uh, Romans 15 verse 1 is in the context of the whole of Romans 14. And, and that, the context of that is that uh, there's people who are strong in faith and there are people who are weak in faith and those weak in faith, you know, they have all these laws and they can't eat meat and they can't do this and they can't do that. And... and Paul in the Romans is teaching us, look, don't please yourself. If this offends a fellow brother or sister, then don't do it. Because you're not to live for yourself, you're not to use your freedom to do what you want, you want to think about others and please others. 
And then verse 2 goes on to speak generally about the importance of pleasing others. Pleasing others so that we can edify them and help them and not um, be a stumbling block to them. I'm going to re- I use two examples. There's many examples that I can quote. What does it mean uh, to be pleasing others? All right, so here we are at Bazo. In terms of church, it's easy to want to please ourselves and to make the church be how I want it to be. All right, that's how it is. And you should hear God's word saying, stop it. <laughs> stop doing that. So I grew up, I remember um, when I was a young man where, um, where it became a, a bit of a challenging time when it came to the songs we sing. You know, there's a group of people, normally the older people, who just wanted the old hymns. And there's a group of people who just wanted the upbeat modern songs. So if I apply this scripture, I am not to please myself by just pushing what I want. So what do I have to do then? We need to love each other and have balance. And that's what we're trying to do at Bazo. We've had a few old hymns today, a few modern songs, because we want to care for each other. What about individually? Individually, I live the Christian life and I will have, um, I will have a certain standard to live by. And I have to be careful not to push that standard upon other people and to become judgmental and critical of other Christians. I'm not to please myself by pushing my rules on other people. You get this? this is all practical Christianity. Instead, I am to love them, pray for them, and it says in verse 2, edify them, build them up. This is what it means to be living a life where I'm pleasing others and not pleasing myself. So what do you think of this, eh? All right, here's another one. In verse 3, we have the example of Jesus. Verse 3, For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who approached you fell on me. Wow, so when I look at Jesus, when I look at what he went through, how he was misunderstood and maligned, I can be also, I can be misunderstood and maligned, and I am called to live Christ's example. I'm not to react, I'm not to be self-focused, and not to give a selfish response, but I am to be selfless like Jesus was. A few verses I'd like to read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus teaches us this. Do not resist one who is evil, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. That's pretty easy, isn't it? We'll keep going on. <laughs> no, it's challenging. Wow, this is what it means to please others. What about Jesus himself? He sets an example for us. In 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter writes, While being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges justly. So this is what it means to, to be living a selfless life, pleasing others and pleasing God above everything. And it takes perseverance to live like that. It's it's challenging to live like that. It takes perseverance to keep on knocking down my sinful nature and my desire to be selfish. It takes perseverance to put the old man down and to let the new man come alive. Perseverance. So then we come to verse 4. And we read in verse 4 of Romans 15, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. I love that. This great book, the unique book, the only book in the world like it, this great book has been written for our benefit and it has so much instruction in it, but look what Paul says here. This book has been written to help us have perseverance, to give us encouragement, this book. So as we read it, as we read it daily, I hope you're doing that, this book will give you perseverance. So what do we mean by that? Well, as I read through this book, I'm going to come across the number one person in the book, and that is our God. And if there's any attribute you think about God here that comes in, surely perseverance. What a persevering God. He has persevered with us humans for so long. Persevering with us, 
still faithful to all his promises, persevering. We're going to see in our God how persevering he is, never giving up, never giving up. Jesus never gave up on his disciples. God never gave up on his plan through his people. He perseveres. We're going to see that. Do you see it in the Bible? And what about other, you see people too, like I'm just going to pick a few names. What about, um, let's say, Moses? What perseverance. Man, he was with a stubborn and stiff-necked people and he persevered. Noah persevered, building the ark with everybody mocking him and ridiculing him. What an example of perseverance. In the New Testament, what about the perseverance of Christ, the King, persevering to the end? And what about the perseverance of Paul? They hunted him down, they wanted to kill him. But God rescued him again and again, persevering right to the end, running the race, running the race well. So as you read your Bible, you're going to see wonderful examples of perseverance and it will encourage you to persevere. Won't it? I reckon it will. And now I'm going to read uh, Romans chapter 15 and verse 5. Not only do we have the scriptures that give us perseverance, but verse 5 says, Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. So I love how it says here very specifically that it actually is God who gives us perseverance. So God himself gives us perseverance and the scriptures, God's word, gives us perseverance. So what that means is as I read the Bible, I'm, getting, I'm seeing perseverance, I'm learning how to persevere, I'm encouraged to persevere, but also I have God, by his spirit, helping me to persevere. I don't know if you've had that in your life, I have. When you feel like giving in, I have um, God just whispering into my mind, whispering into my ear, telling me, Come on, get up. Even when I've sinned, even when ministries become hard, the God who gives you perseverance, and he does it so gently, he does it so kindly, he gives us the perseverance we need to continue on. I trust you know that. That is the most beautiful thing. So by his word and by his spirit we persevere. And you know what? We're able to persevere to the end because of our God and because of his word. And we need to persevere to the end. It's the actual final proof that we are truly a Christian. Do you know that? Jesus taught us that in Matthew 24, verse 13. Whoever perseveres to the end will be saved. We will not fall away like so many people. We will not be led astray like so many people. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, Jesus tells us the danger of the days we live in. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. So why are we not led astray? Because of our God, because of his word. We are able to persevere and continue on. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. And as we persevere... We have such amazing blessings that come upon us, both individually, we've, we know our salvation is assured as we persevere, but also we are such a, together, as we persevere together. Look what we read here. I'm going to read Romans 15, 4 and 5 together. Oh, sorry, 5 and 6. Romans 15, 5 and 6. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're great words, what we're reading here. There is a reason why God wants us to persevere in our faith, to grow in our faith, to not give up. As we persevere, we're going to be growing, and together as we grow, it becomes a beautiful picture. We become one people. We have one heart, we have one mind. We become a people with one mission, working together. A people with one voice to glorify our God. That is an awesome picture. We're all individuals, all different and separate from each other, but in Christ, by God's persevering in our hearts, by God ministering to us, we become a glorious people. 
What a people we become like no other in the whole world. This is exciting stuff, friends. This is what it's all about. It comes down to me as an individual. Reading God's word, allowing God's spirit to minister to me, to help me not be a quitter, to help me not be pulling other people down, but living this life, pleasing the Lord, pleasing others, and living a life where we become a beautiful people. May you persevere. May Bazo be a persevering people. The other word I'm going to look at now, which we've already seen in verses 4 and 5, did you notice that? Together with perseverance is the word encouragement. I'll read it again. Verses 4 and 5. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. Encouragement. Encouragement is a great word. Now in the Greek language, if you know any Greek, the, the Greek word, which is, this is interesting, for encouragement is paraklesis. And uh, I've, I think I've said this before when we're going through John's Gospel. Paraklesis, doesn't it sound similar to a word that Jesus uses of the Holy Spirit? That's in John chapter 14. I'm going to read it to you. Verses 16 to 18, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another parakletos. And we translate parakletos to be helper, comforter, counsellor or encourager. That's Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus goes on to say that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. And you will know him because he will abide with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So why I'm reading John 14 is because the main way that God encourages us is by that encouragement word, paraklesis, klesis, comes, is really the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to bless us so much. And one of the things he loves to do is to encourage us. So how does that thing, how is that different from perseverance? Well, perseverance, God's going to give you perseverance so that you make it to the end. Encouragement is what you need to make sure you run well. You know, like when you're running, you've got the crowd cheering you on. It sort of makes you want to keep on going. I remember at school um, seeing our girls running and, uh, and their group, and I remember seeing, um, say they're doing the uh, 1,500 metres. Uh, what's that? Four laps. So here they are, they start off, they're all running fast. And they get away from their grandstand and they all slow down and some start walking. <laughs> they're not running very well. And then they come around and they come right in front of the grandstand and they start running again. And they're running really fast. <laughs> come around, slow right down. That's because they, they needed encouragement. We need encouragement. And the Holy Spirit is there to encourage us to run the race well. To run it really well. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to think of these things now. I'm going to think of God who encourages us. In my mind, I, I, I want to think of the way encouragement to me is like God lifts us up. And a, a great passage comes to my mind when I think of that. And it's in Isaiah chapter 40, 29 to 31. You should know this one. This is a great passage. God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strengths. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's a wonderful picture of the encouragement God gives us. What a picture. Have you ever seen eagles in the country? Look at them soaring on the thermals. And that's a picture of the Holy Spirit that is able to lift us up and encourage us so that we can fly, that we can run the race well. And we also have the Bible. God himself, through the Spirit and the Bible, um, gives us such encouragement. We're encouraged when we read the Psalms, aren't you? Yeah. We're encouraged when we read the prophecies that are fulfilled. Aren't we? We're encouraged when we read those magnificent promises. It encourages us. God's word and God's spirit encourages us. 
And when we are encouraged, then we need to turn it around and we need to be an encourager of each other. It's not all about me, me, me. When we're encouraged, then we are to encourage each other. A few verses on this. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 13. Encourage one another and build one another up just as you also are doing. In Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see something coming, what is it? The great day drawing near. This is a critical time to get this right, to be encouraged so fully in the Holy Spirit so that you can encourage each other because this is so essential in the days we live. We need to be champions at encouraging one another. I don't reckon we're that good at it. We need to get better at it. We need to look at each other and, and care for each other and give that lifting up feeling to people to encourage them in the faith. And as we do that, verses 5 and 6 come to be. We will become such a people of oneness where we have one heart, one mind, part of one great mission, living for one great kingdom and bringing glory to our God and Father and our Lord Jesus. All right, one more word to look at. And the first time we saw it was in verse 4. Let me read Romans 15, verse 4 again. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. Hope. I, I love this, hope. So, um... um Oman um, um and uh, Eka, you come from a Hindu background and you, ha you would have had no hope. And, and we, most of us here, are, oh, we're pagan Gentiles as well. And we had no hope as well. And the Bible speaks about that. We had no hope. We were without hope and without God in this world. That's a pretty frightening thing to be. I had no idea about it either. But when we have come to know Jesus, something amazing has happened. In coming to know him, our hearts have been filled with hope, glorious hope. It, it, comes, it says this at the, um, in Romans 15, 11 and 12, where it says, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, There shall come the, there shall come the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles hope. And we have amazing hope. Without hope, but now we have hope. And I love to think about the race, right? So I need God to help me persevere. Don't quit. Don't give up. And I need encouragement from the Lord so that I can run well, chest out, running well. But I also need hope. And where is that hope to be found? That hope is to be found in terms of where I'm heading. I'm not just heading for death and that's the end of it. I'm heading for glory. I'm heading for well done, good and faithful servant. I'm heading for the words of Jesus. Come, you who are blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. That's our hope. Look at what God's done. Perseverance, encouragement and hope. He's done all these things so that we can run the race well. So when I think of hope, I'm going to read to you now from 1 Peter chapter 1. And 1 Peter chapter 1 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And it goes on to say, To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Look what is before us. It is incredible. And in a world of hopelessness and helplessness and brokenness and despair, this hope fills our hearts and gives us incredible joy and peace. Amen. It filled Jesus' heart with joy. What were those words again? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, 
He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have so many things to get through in life as we live in this fallen world, but God gives us hope. What a glorious hope. A hope that's meant to put a smile on the dial. All right? A hope that's meant to give you a step in your running race to glory. A hope that overrides all your troubles and trials of life. All the tragedies and despairs. Let me now read to you a little bit more of 1 Peter chapter 1, 6 to 9. Even though for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, in this you greatly rejoice, that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Look at the word joy being mentioned there. And I want to finish with Romans 15 verse 13. It says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful way to finish this section. The God of hope. Paul mentions how he's the God of hope. He has given us glorious hope, a sure and certain hope, a living hope. And that hope, that hope is so amazing that it fills our heart with what two qualities? Peace, a real settledness, and joy. Joy in the Holy Spirit. And our prayer at Bazo got an AGM today, but even beyond the AGM, is that we might know the God of hope filling our hearts by the Spirit, giving us hope and filling our hearts with peace and joy. Run the race well. Run it well. Persevere. Get up when you fall. Have encouragement from the Spirit to run really well and run well because of the hope before us. May you run it well, the race set before you, fixing your eyes on Jesus. May you stand firm to the end. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing now um, the song, Here We Stand. Here we stand, the church of the redeemed, ransomed by the blood that sets us free. And after church, we've got our, our luncheon together too. Let's stand.
Wow, here we are. We are the church of the redeemed. Take it in. What a people we've become. May we persevere. May the Lord really encourage us in our walk. And may the hope we have fill our hearts and minds. It's a good benediction to read, really, before I pray. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, thank you so much for all your scriptures. Thank you that Paul mentions how the scriptures have been written for our benefit, all those ones long ago written. And we thank you for the Old Testament. And I thank you for how we see again and again your beautiful character. Thank you that you're the God who perseveres and gives encouragement and hope. And I thank you for how we see that coming into the New Testament so strongly through Jesus and through the apostles. So I pray for all of us that not one of us would fall away, not one of us would lose our way, that you would help us to know through the scriptures and through you, Father, through the Holy Spirit, the, that wonderful ministry to help us persevere to the end, to be encouraged and to be filled with hope. I ask that as a result we might be in a great place to help others around us who aren't saved, that we might point them to you, that, Lord, you would help us, that we'd have the joy of seeing our friends and family, our neighbours, our loved ones, coming to love Jesus too. And I thank you, Father, for how even though Jesus taught us we're going to live through rocky times, I've just been reading that in my quiet times, really challenging times, I thank you that having you in our life is everything. And we will get through because of you. We will persevere and we will endure and one day we'll stand before you and we can't wait for that day. Thank you that you are the great God, the God and great God of our Lord Jesus. You are our wonderful King. We thank you that you are the God of hope. And we thank you for Jesus, the most glorious man of all, not just a man, the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us, who intercedes for us before the throne even now. We thank you for Jesus. And thank you for each other, Father. Please help us to be great encouragers of each other. And I kind of just ask now for your blessing on the food we'll be eating soon. Uh, Lord, may you bless this food to us. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. And may you bless our AGM as well. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.